the Amiga didn't get too many Metroidvania games in its heyday, so it's been up to a new generation of developer to try and fill that gap. And today we're checking out a modern game, Tiny Little Slug. And welcome to Goldfish on Games. Developed by Magic Eye Studios, it was released in 2020. This came out for both the original hardware and the CD32. Although the only real difference between them is the media. And the release I bought came with both editions. Inside the box we find the game on a single floppy disk, so it was really using all that space on the CD, as well as having this charming manual. That's in both German and English. The game starts off with our slimy hero wanting a bite to eat, and that strawberry looks perfect. But it turns out this is a harder quest than he first expected as we fall into a pit. While our sluggy friend doesn't have much in the way of abilities, it does have some interesting movement. As you can move along most surfaces, and even go around some corners, mostly the enclosed ones. And while we get going, I feel it's worth pointing out that if you know what you're doing, this isn't a particularly long game. To the extent where it doesn't track your score, but your time. And if your machine happens to be online, then you can submit your times to the global leaderboards. And because of all that, I won't be covering the entire game, as I need to leave you something to enjoy when you go and play it. And I think you should do, as it is a lovely game. It's also a game without a save system or even passwords. You are expected to complete it in a single sitting. But it won't be your first attempt, that's for sure. Even with the generous checkpoints. Now like all good Metroid style games, it likes to dangle new areas or blockages that you can't get past as you go along. And the first instance of this is the Cold Zone, an area that will sap our health. So we're going to need to explore more, all while still just using that basic movement set. Which doesn't include jumping by the way. It's all about trying to find the right way to stick to the blocks and the walls to move around the levels. And you can't just stick to the ceiling straight away, you're going to have to work your way up to those, all while avoiding the baddies and the spikes, which like the cold, will hurt you. Now after a little bit of work we will find our first power up, the chili pepper, that lets us travel into the frozen lands. One of the early annoyances is the movement of the baddies, as they can be quite random and erratic, which makes trying to move past them so much harder than it should be. More so if you select one of the higher difficulty levels. But when you die, which at start will be quite a bit, the checkpoints don't tend to be too far away. The game does like to give you some hints on where to go blocks that point in a direction, or just designed in a way that you can't get too lost. It's all very well thought out, but it does mean that it can be a little bit more linear than you might expect. Like any good Metroidvania, there are boss fights but due to the more limited abilities of our little slug friend, they tend to be more about puzzling or using the arena, than directly attacking them. This tends to be the weaker part of the game. Between the limited movement and health, these can drag on a little bit, as you have to do them again and again. The checkpoints aren't too far away, but it can feel like a bit of a slog to start with. 
while the game might not have the fanciest graphics we've ever seen on the Amiga, I think it all looks very clean and quite nice. There's a good amount of detail there. The levels all have their own distinct style and clearly sets them all apart. Which is useful as you will crisscross your way between them as you go. And that's not to say it doesn't do any interesting effects. There's this area that ends up getting more corrupted the more you try and move through it. It does also help that it, each area also has its own music. The levels aren't huge, but they are quite maze-like. But there are a few areas that you'll keep returning to. As you'll meet up with a few friendlies. And they'll have a few items that you want. But they're not going to give them up without getting something in return. So we have a couple of fetch quests to complete. And between them we'll get the ability to jump as well as been able to walk through spikes, leading us from the coldest place to the hottest, where thankfully our little friend doesn't have any issues with the heat. Apart from the lava, obviously. But some of the locals, they aren't faring as well, as the lava squid is asking us to collect some bottles of water for a mate. Now these are really well hidden, and there's no direct indication of how many there are, or how many you've collected. Not until you've gotten all the way to the end of this interconnected maze and you have to hand them over to the creature that needs the liquids. All while a very familiar sounding bit of music is playing. And then what Metroid game would be complete without a time sequence? with it being in this instance lava that's chasing you up the screen. It's possibly a little too fast and having to deal with some of those randomly moving baddies later wasn't too fun, but it was still an overall enjoyable sequence. But before we know it, we're on to the last area of the game. Now this includes ghosts that can be a little tricky to avoid and the best plan seems to be to trap them off screen where they won't attack you anymore, as well as the usual baddies that you have to deal with. And I think this will be where we'll end this review, because as we mentioned earlier, this is not the longest game. It's almost a Metroid light with its content and gameplay, but I still think it's a lovely little title and one that you can still buy brand new. So if this interests you, then you can go grab a copy. Hopefully the small team that made this is working on a larger game, as I think they could do some lovely things. And I hope you enjoyed this shorter review. It's a nice change from those epically long ones that I've been doing recently. And if you enjoyed this, then let me know in the comments. Same if there's any other modern Amiga games that you'd like me to check out. And remember, keep reaching for that strawberry, as you might just get it. And until next time, I was the Gouldfish, that was a tiny little slug, and this was Gouldfish on Games. Thanks for watching, I've been covering Amiga stuff for quite some time, so there should be two links on the screen with other videos that you might want to check out. Or you could use the buttons down there the ones that let YouTube know that you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more content from me, and I hope you do, as I'd love to see you again in another video.